Chapter 12 Visit to Hampi While I was studying in the Urvakonda school the chairman of the municipal council of Bellari a neighboring district headquarters town had a dream Somebody told him in the dream you go to such and such a house in Urvakonda with such and such a number and bring that boy Satyam here His wife Lakshmi Devi too had a dream at the same time in which someone advised her Amma You and your husband go together and bring Satyam here. Accordingly, both of them came to Urvakonda. I am only five feet tall even now. I was still shorter then and was wearing a shirt and trousers. When I came out from the house one day, the husband and wife saw me. The moment they saw me, the chairman and his wife recognized me as the boy in the dream. They felt very happy. and prostrated before me in full view of everybody in that market place i was going to the school with books in hand the municipal chairman approached the brother of this body and requested seshama raju you think your brother is an ordinary school going lad no no my heart melted and moved at the sight of the radiance in his face and his purity There is some inexplicable divine effulgence in this boy. Don't be carried away by a misapprehension that this boy is an ordinary boy like any other. We want to take this boy along with us and keep him in our house for a few days. You also come along with him and stay in our house for a few days. You must bring Satyam to Bellari even if it meant applying for leave for a few days. Seshama Raju could not refuse. especially when a person of the status of a municipal chairman was requesting him he went immediately to the headmaster and requested sir the chairman sir is requesting me to take satyam to bellari for a few days i request you to kindly grant me leave for the purpose the headmaster had great liking for me he told seshama raju you may take satyam not only to bellari but to any other place You need not obtain my permission. So saying, he gave his own car and sent us to Bellari. The municipal chairman of Bellari hosted us for three days in his house and treated us as honored guests. Thereafter, he took us to the Virupaksha temple in the world famous Hampi town. What I am going to relate to you is not an exaggeration or an egoistic portrayal. All the members of our group enter the Virupaksha temple. If I were to say, "I don't come into the temple," the brother of this body would have pressurized me to go in, or he would have got angry for my impertinence due to the bodily relationship he had with me. Hence, I used a little tact and said, "My stomach is upset. I can't come into the temple." Our teacher Sri Tammi Raju had a group of about fifty to sixty people. who were accompanying us then all of them went into the virupaksha temple however the municipal chairman had no other thought except swami at that time i was very young then nevertheless he held my hands and prayed please raju you must come you must come i was firm in my opinion hence he could not pressurize me seshama raju then instructed me We will go into the temple, have the darshan of Lord Virupaksha, and come back. Till then, you stand as guard to our luggage here. They went inside the temple. At that time, arti, the ritual of waving lighted camphor flame in front of the deity, the Lord Virupaksha was going on. Surprisingly, they could not find Lord Virupaksha's idol there. Instead, they saw Raju there. Seshama Raju was furious. He thought Satyam told me that he would not come into the temple and stand outside. Thereafter, he must have stealthily sneaked into the sanctum sanctorum and stood behind the idol. What a great sacrilege! The municipal chairman Rama Raju did not, however, think so. He only concluded that Virupaksha is Raju and Raju is Virupaksha. 
Seshama Raju came out immediately and searched for me. I was sitting under the same tree where he had kept the luggage. He was a doubting Thomas. He went inside the temple and sent his wife to see whether I was sitting under the tree as usual. She could find me there. At the same time, Seshama Raju could see me in the Sanctum Sanctorum in place of the idol of Lord Virupaksha. Now, he could confirm to himself that Raju was there in the open as well as in the temple simultaneously. He felt very happy, but he could not express his happiness in front of me lest it may cause embarrassment to him. He tried to explain away the incident by saying to himself, It must have appeared like that due to the anxiety we are undergoing in our minds about Satyam. The municipal chairman who brought us to the Virupaksha temple had himself experienced this phenomenon of Raju appearing in two places simultaneously. When the group came out of the temple, he held the hands of Seshama Raju and said, Seshama Raju, you are greatly mistaken thinking that Satyam is your brother. In fact, Satyam is not your brother. He is not an ordinary individual. There is great divine power in him. Then, we were brought from there straight to Bellari. We stayed there for a few days. Ramaraju brought all the officers of the municipality and introduced them to Swami. However, the name Swami was not yet in use in those days. Everyone used to call me Raju. Some people even wondered, how is it that this municipal chairman is giving so much respect to this young boy? Our trip to Bellari and Hampi came to a conclusion and it was time for us to return to Urvakunda. The municipal chairman of Bellari wanted to give me a parting gift, but I frankly told him that I would not accept any gifts. He offered to get me four pairs of trousers and shirts. I told him I would not accept even one. There used to be a fashion some fifty years ago for the youth to wear a collar pin on their shirts. You don't find this practice anymore, but in those days, whoever wore a collar pin was considered to be a great and wealthy person. He was not sure as to what kind of gift should be given to me before my departure. His wife advised him that it would be better if a gold collar pin was presented to me as a gift. He went to a goldsmith and got one gold collar pin made for me in an hour's time and put it on the collar of my shirt. He held my hands and prayed, Raju, whenever you see this collar pin, you must remember me. I refused to accept the collar pin. It was my habit not to touch others' articles under any circumstances at any time. Then, Seshama Raju reasoned with me. He presented the collar pin out of great love for you. If you refuse, it would amount to insulting him. At last, I accepted the collar pin at the insistence of Seshama Raju and permitted the municipal chairman to put it on my collar. <laughs>